Hey! So, uh, I wanted to shoot a quick video with a sort of summary of what we did in these days and check how is the starter doing and offer you the solution for problems you might have and then tell you how you should do uh, how you should feed your starter how you should test if it's ready for uh, making bread and maybe uh, we can also talk a little bit about some interesting scientific facts about the sourdough starter so actually this one the so the starter that I wasn't happy about finally it seems like it's it's doing its thing and so I'm gonna refresh it and I think this is good I'll try and show it to you so now you can see can you see all those little bubbles on the sides um, this is a clear sign of yeast activity inside this this mix which is great um, so one thing is that when you create the, the initial mix of flour and water what happens normally is that obviously there are all kind of um, organisms that are in the air in the flour itself and initially there are going to be some kind of bacteria that are going to start to um, feed themselves on the flour and water that you have and these are not the bacteria that you're interested in for your actual sourdough starters these bacteria initially will produce a lot of carbon dioxide and so you'll see a lot of bubbling initially and you think hey it's, it's working great but that's completely not what you're interested in yeasts in that stage are going to be still not uh, able to do their job because they need an acidic environment at the beginning the the mix is not acidic together with the bacteria that might produce those bubbles initially you will also probably have lactobacillus so uh, lactic bacteria and um, those bacteria will produce um, lactic acid and will make the mix more and more acidic at some point this acidity will actually kill off basically every other organism except for themselves so the lactic bacteria so the initial bacteria that were causing all the bubbling will die and so the bubbling will stop and so you might think oh no it's dead it's not working uh, while instead it's actually just uh, created the, the right environment for the yeast to develop and so this might be a few days in which you might think that this is not working but it will eventually work even just by mixing every now and then uh, a little, every few times during a day the, the, this, the starter this could help um, the, the activity of the yeasts because you're introducing oxygen and you're mixing uh, you're balancing the hydration levels inside the mixture you're, um, you're bringing inside all kinds of things that are on the surface and so this is a good practice if things don't work maybe try and do some extra mixing of your uh, of your starter this one I have um, kept it outside the fridge because it wasn't ready yet now it's definitely in a good position so now I'm gonna feed it refresh it as I said um, and this is the step that you should do basically every week independently from the fact that you're making bread or you're not making bread or you're not baking whatever you want to do now in theory the a starter can survive for much longer in, in, in the fridge a month it would still survive probably even longer but in those cases if you then want to use it you will need to wait for longer you will need to do a series of feeds and to bring it to a stage where you can actually use it now I would say that first of all I will do one feed and um, so I'll tell you about that it's very simple it's what we did basically previously so first of all I don't want to keep all the starter I have here I don't need that much I decided I'm gonna keep ju just 60 grams of this I will empty I will throw away all everything in excess of 60 grams and then I'll I'll do the actual feeding just give me a moment so if you followed the previous steps I don't know 
how do you feel about your starter, how is it going, if you put it in the fridge because it was nice and active already or if you decided to keep it outside like I did, uh, in which case you might have fed it every f um, 24 hours and the way that you should feed it every 24 hours if you're still waiting for the, for the next steps and in general the way every time you should feed it is just by, just by taking a quantity of the one you have add the same amount in flour and then a quantity of water which is, I already said it in the other videos, between 50 to 100 percent of that quantity that you've, that you've decided to keep um, and that really, there are many reasons to do that. Uh, let's say that if you have a very liquid starter, it's going to be more acidic. You might use it to have a, kind of a more tangy uh, result in your baking. If you keep it uh, stiffer, it's going to be sweeter. Let's say that, let's say that this is the, the main difference. I decided to go midway and just because it's going to be easier to mix. And uh, so I decided that I'm keeping 60 grams of the starter. Uh, I'm adding 60 grams of flour and then uh, 40 grams of water. And as usual, the first thing you need to do is to add the water. In this case, if you have a jar that's convenient enough, just add the water and then mix. Okay, so I mix the water in and I can add the flour. I mean, it's the same thing, so this is really not, nothing that needs to be explained. Just mixing flour and water, seriously. So if this one was uh, in the fridge for you, or whenever you keep it later on in the fridge, you need to you need to uh, take it out of the fridge for a couple of hours so it gets to a um, uh, room temperature and it starts to be more active and then you do this procedure and then after this is done you leave it for a couple of hours outside of the fridge so the yeast again start eating and then you can close it and put it back in the fridge and you've done your feeding. The part that I've thrown away actually could be a part that you are using for a recipe. In this case I'm just feeding so I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna keep it a couple of hours at room temperature in the kitchen and then I think I might put it in the fridge. And this could be almost a starter that's ready. I told you that I would explain how to test if your starter is ready uh, to be used for bread making. Take a little bit of the starter, it doesn't have to be a lot. Take a little bit of the starter, let's say it's I don't know, 20 grams starter, then add 20 grams um, water and 20 grams flour. Mix it, leave it there for a few hours, at least four hours, but you'll see how active it is. If it grows nicely, four hours can be enough, but it's it could be even six hours. At that point, you just take you, you take a little bit, and as you see, I'm doing here. You just um, uh, put a little bit of the um, of that starter in a glass full of water, and if the starter floats, it means that it's ready. And in that moment, in that precise moment, you can use what you have to make bread. So this is what you do normally when you make bread, but this is also a way that you can test your starter. And I think that's, that's it. I kind of told you everything. So next time the video I will post will be an actual recipe of bread. So I think this, is, this summarizes what we did in all these videos. And let me know how it goes. And enjoy your starter.